Well, welcome to the roundtable, everybody. You're listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network or watching us on Broadway World or on YouTube. We're excited to be here. I was born in the 80s, so I was definitely in 1990-something, and I know that this next band is... Uh, had a whole bunch of hits and smashes and been touring around and I'm so excited to be here to talk about their music and what they do. Sub Radio, everybody. I don't know if you, you need to sh check it out. Check out the, new, the newest the newest single, Ceilings, which is out now and you can be streaming it wherever it is sold and out and about and sold. Now, now I'm aging myself, like going to the Coconut Records on a, on a Tuesday to go buy a CD. Wherever you stream your music, Mike. Adam, Matt, welcome to the round table. Hello, Sub Radio. Hello. Hey, thanks for having us. So, congrats. Well, before we get started, while everyone is here, firstly, if you want information, go to sub radio.com so you can stay up to date on the music and the tour dates and all of the fun things. Look, fireworks and everything. Ah, what? Magic. Oh, uh, and you could be sh make sure you follow. Follow us. <laughs> Whoa. See, we come with the, we come with. Full theatrics here for the rock groups. I love it. And uh, and follow Sub Radio on IG at Sub Radio Band. Why does it only work for Mike? It doesn't work for me. It's because of the hair. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> oh, and that's not fair. Would you mind introducing, what do you each do for the band? Mike, what do you do in the band? I'm the drummer for the band. I, that's why he gets all of the fun. That's it. Oh. Tell you what. <laughs> now, what about you? Uh, I am the lead singer. Adam is the lead singer. Adam's yeah. the lead singer, yeah. Uh, and I am Matt, and I am the guitar player. Nice. Uh, that means th there's no one to play key. So I'll I know how to play a C chord and a G seven. So I'm in. I'm ready to go. Let's Great. Do Perfect. That's nice. this. That's uh, Adam. Tell us when was the band formed? How did you all meet each other? How did you all become the Sub Radio? Uh, I actually I'm gonna let Matt answer that because it it kind of started with Matt. Uh, he, he sort of brought us all together. Yeah, so um, I was doing the thing that you do when you're in middle school and they make you take a guitar class, which is uh, me and my good friend John were like, let's start a band. And uh, we decided to do that. And uh, it was really bad at first. And then met some of these other guys in middle school and high school, kind of begged them to come to my place and play some music with me. And they said yes, eventually. And, uh, and then we started playing music together and it got better. And uh, and then we started kind of bumming around playing like real shows in high school. It was kind of just for fun at first. And then in 2016, we were like, let's do this for real. Let's do it. And uh, and started Sub Radio. That's how it started. I love the word eventually. Eventually was my favorite. We we they joined <laughs> eventually, and we got good eventually. So what what Adam? Uh, what was it like to meet the other guys? What, I'm sure bands have their own dynamics of. Family life, love, hate, fight, adore, family, your brothers. It really, yes. I mean, absolutely. And it's been, what, like 16 years now or something that we've been uh, doing music things together, which is kind of insane to think about. That's like half of our lives now, uh, which is pretty wild. Um, but I, I mean, I think what I remember right off the bat with what eventually became Sub Radio is that we all listened to like five or I guess there were six members of and six distinct genres of music with like no overlap in our tastes at all um and so we were really like one of the most eclectic is like the nice way to say it uh we had no no sound or direction at all we were just pumping out uh songs that we thought sounded cool and i think that was honestly really helpful for us because like now we have sort of defined our own sound and we've chosen a lane and a genre in which to make music but like we're all bringing such wild perspectives to this little indie pop genre that we're making. But I think that like really helps us a lot. I, the the sound is, Adam, how do you describe it? What do you call your sound? <laughs> we change our answer like every six months. Um, I, I We broadly, I think I would call us indie pop. We're like a pop rock alt band. I don't know. The next thing we're putting out is rockier than we've been. Um, but genres are so hard these days. Yeah. Cross genres. It's for pe people who like music. That's it. Mike, what do you think about when you look at this journey, you think back at starting, you know, being the high school band and you think this is just fun. And what was the moment where you thought like, oh, damn, we, we're we a business. We're professional. We're, we're, we're doing something. 
Oh, I had that moment like way before everyone else. I think <laughs> I had that moment like uh, like still in high school when we made our first ever recording. Uh, this is a like super throwback. The song doesn't exist anymore, but we like wrote and recorded the song called "Playing with Matches" and we recorded it in a studio for the first time. Uh, it is literally our, our first ever recording ever. Like you cannot find the song anywhere. Um, but I remember like we went to the studio, we did the recording, and then like we got an email with the recording and I pulled it up at my like home computer for the first time in high school. And I was like, we're famous. This is amazing. <laughs> and at that point I was like, this is a really freaking good band and it's going to go really far. <laughs> Mike, you are early. Mike believing right from the go. That's why he gets fireworks and plasma laser beams. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Matt, when you guys, what when did you decide like this was going to be it like you were all in like you guys were going to create create music and and that this was this was there was no b plan you were in you guys were a band on the road yeah i think we started to feel that direction happening in 2016 when we changed our name and we were like hey we're not we're not like a high school project anymore we want to be like a real thing uh, and of course as soon as we did that we dropped an album with no singles and no promotion and just changed our name had a Went CD great. release show the uh the cds didn't arrive on time they weren't even at the show uh, it was great um but we got a lot more professional i would say around like 2018 we played firefly somehow the year after um 2016 and that kind of i think raised everyone's uh everyone's thinking in the band of like oh this is real we can do this and uh and we're good at it um and then 2018 came around we put out a song called flashback and that song has persisted to this day for us flashback millions, of, millions of streams and pineapple. Uh, go go stream the music wherever you listen to your music and um hundreds of thousands of streams monthly on spotify I, I you could share some over to me i mean you, you don't have to take them all adam what uh what what is the writing process? You guys write originals like these. You're an original band. So what is the process with a bunch of how do you make that work as a group? We um, it's changed a lot in the last few years as we've like upped the amount of music that we create. It used to be that we were writing maybe like 10 songs a year um, and we wrote 50 for this album alone. Um, and so that necessitated some changes. It used to be that basically everything we wrote, we got together and we started from scratch in a room together playing our instruments. Um, and that is how a lot of like the very early sub radio stuff was created. And since then it's become more of a, it's the same way that a lot of people do music now of like sh file sharing over computers. And most of the band has little private recording setups at our houses. Um, and so we've been starting stuff that way, like Matt or myself or, or Mike or Kyle or John will have a scrap of something um that then needs melody and lyrics um and and so we'll like pass stuff around and people will add things and then we'll get in a room and we'll like finalize here's a verse here's a chorus here's how the song flows um and uh this past year for the this album cycle we started getting in the room with other writers which has been just like very eye-opening and cool and i think has expanded our writing a lot um, so we've, we've gotten to write with a bunch of artists that we love, uh, people like, uh, Small Pools and, and Joan and, um, other art artists that we, we really adore. Um, and, uh, and so that's been cool too. Uh, so, you know, we're already a band with five guys in it and then we're inviting other people into the process. So there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, but I think it contributes to the really cool things. Yeah, then absolutely. Mike, when you all, uh, I'm sure the pandemic you know, home recording and, and and the idea of being isolated and, and stuff like that became, there's it's a whole new world. You don't have to go to rent a studio space. Do you all work virtually like that and tinker away at the computer? We do, yeah. Uh, the, the two people that do the most kind of work on that end are Adam and Matt. Uh, Matt Adam, uh, sorry. Uh, Matt does a lot of like the actual music composition uh, and Adam does a lot of the lyric writing. And that that's how a lot of the demos happen now and then once we have like a working demo that we can listen to in like a uh, like in the computer then we'll we'll often bring that recording uh to like our practice space and uh then we'll play it live in the room to figure out like the, the full arrangement 
Um, yeah, we, that that is a pretty common way that we do things, like kind of remotely. Uh, we did have a very fun, like, it, it's funny you mentioned the the pandemic because the pandemic did change like a lot of stuff for us as like for the rest of the world as well, uh, like as, as as we all know. But uh, the um, the pandemic really forced us to like do a lot of things ourselves. And so now we're doing like video stuff ourselves, a lot of recordings ourselves, like and like logistics and like and all, all this sort of stuff we went viral on the internet by you know just from doing it a lot over the pandemic uh which like got us the the team we have now and and all this stuff so in a lot of ways the pandemic like transformed the band in a lot of good ways um so yeah it's, it's pretty cool the matt you all have hit the road what is what is a sub radio show like i'm sure it's a party because your sound is very fun like y'all are fun you have fun songs so I'm sure this crowd, your energy, it's a party up there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you kind of gave it a good summary as is. Um, I mean, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is our live show because we've been playing together for a long time. Um, probably played 500 shows with each other easily. Um, and in recent years, a ton more. Um, since the pandemic, we were, I mean, we were streaming like three times a week uh, on Reddit. So we got a lot of like practice in, um, but when we hit the stage, like for real, like the thing that we ask from people is to uh, basically just give us back the energy that we give them, which is just uh, move with us um, and, and groove and, and do whatever you, you want to do and be whoever you want to be. Well, that sounds like a good place to me. Some of the singles, you know, better, better than that. And you, know, I, I love Janet and Madonna too. 1990 something. <laughs> that song is fire. And we talked about flashback. We talked the new single at ceilings is out. A whole bunch of music. There's a ton of music out. Wherever music, Adam, with all with a catalog now, you have a catalog of music. So I'm sure the people want to hear some of the familiar songs, but you want to you have new music. So how do you put together a, a sub radio show? What's a set list like? I'm so concerned about this for the next tour. <laughs> <laughs> not for maybe not for this next one, but for the one that comes after it, because we're gonna have a, a full length album out by the time we or after this next one um and uh we are gonna officially have too many bangers yes. um and so the, the tour math the, the set list math is going to become very complicated um right now i mean the set we just played for the this tour that we just got off i adored um and still we were leaving off stuff that i know our fans love and that we love playing uh just because we can't we can't go all night um but it's it's really it's really complicated and we we want to keep the energy up as much as possible like like matt was saying our, our shows are are uh like big cathartic energy dance parties and so you you want to have some breaks in there we don't the problem is we don't write songs that provide us with breaks <laughs> so it it tends to just be 13 straight bangers um but yeah, I'm I'm concerned about uh about set lists coming up because we're gonna have to stop playing stuff that people really love. That's a good problem to have. That's first world problem. That's great. So that means you write <laughs> thirteen bangers in a row. That means Adam's poor voice. But besides Adam's voice, Mike, your arms. That means you're yeah. just at it. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I mean look funny. at those arms. <laughs> well, by the by the end of the tour, like. But I mean, this this happened on, on the road as well. But like my my hands will have like blisters all over them. Like if if I don't like take care of them and all that. So um, yeah, it's you can kind of see some from like the recording sessions like a, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot of energy that's expended on stage. <laughs> that's what that's. Come on, drum. See, I'm like Adam. I want to just hold my mic and then walk off. <laughs> Those days we we got too much energy for that. <laughs> those days of putting to get put in the drum kit. I know you have a crew now, but putting the guitars away and packing the drum set. No, I like a singer. I just see you tomorrow, guys. I'll be I'm going to the band. Uh, no, that, that's actually really I funny tell that you you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh Mike might give me a run for my money, but I am typically the sweatiest guy in the band. <laughs> that. Front man energy. Yeah. Come on, Adam. Matt, when yeah. you, where can we, when can we expect more music? When can we expect the next tour? Tell us where we can get all our information. Uh, well, the next tour is on sale right now. It's called the Sunrise Cities Tour, and we're hitting the West Coast, a little bit of the East Coast. You can get tickets right now. Please do, um, and we will see you there. Uh, new music is a little bit more up in the air. We're working on it 
currently. We want to have a single out hopefully in the next four months, five months, somewhere in that time frame. Um, but yeah, you can find us on any social media platform that exists. We literally are on all of them right there. He's got it for you. Uh, every handle is at sub radio band. We also have a Patreon page. So if you want to get more in, if you want to like actually like support us financially, you can do that. Um, we also have a, a, a discord with a lot of people who are uh, very friendly and they would love to meet you. So. I Join love that. that. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Come on sub radio folks and the fam go out there, go to sub slash sub sub dash radio.com. And this summer, you can catch them on the road. Like they said, if you're on the West Coast or some dates on the East Coast, you can go to all the social media. You all did the most brilliant thing I ever saw. When you go stream some of your singles on Spotify, You the tour dates are on the... Come on, that's called <laughs> marketing, y'all. That's it. That's it. Everyone should be stealing that idea. You can see the tour dates. They're right there on the singles. Or you could go to the website and then the social media. I give you guys a lot of credit. You guys are putting out the work. I, I love this. It's catchy. It's fun. It's it's energy. It's a good vibe. It's great for the summer. So make sure you catch them on the road. And congratulations to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Seriously. Thanks so much. We don't get Thank it. You. Oh, oh, there oh. we go. A He's little, got it. Oh. Come on, Mike's got the lucky. Oh. He's a drummer. That's we why. Don't I have it. It's it's that drummer vibe. It's the drummer vibe. Congratulations! <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> much love. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank All you right, so much for having you. us. Ooh, Sub Radio is here. That was fun. I like them. They're really fun. I love a band. Oh, Band Energy. I want a band. I have a band. Hey, you want to see me and my band? Go to 54below.org. Go check it out. 54below.org. I'll be with my band June 14th for Pride. And you can go to robertbannon.com if you want more information about me or follow me at Robert M. Bannon on Instagram. And... Um, as always, thank you so much for being here. Catch Sub Radio on the road. Thanks to Scott Appel for uh, hooking this up and being so great and making sure they all showed up here on the round table. The round table where artists talk about art, you never know who's going to pop in. It could be a rock band. It could be a Broadway diva. It could be a TV star, a viral TikToker, or I don't know, anybody. It's a show where artists talk about art. There's more love than there is hate, and there's more joy than there is sadness. Sometimes you just got to look for it. The best is yet to come. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time. 